I've always told Curtis we can make a pneumatic kit. And this week I'm going to finally put my money where my mouth is. And I'm going to see if I can take an air tank and an air cylinder and then sprinkle in some tubing, a refill valve, and finally a control valve and see if I can make a working robot. Wish me luck. Okay, so the first thing I've made and plopped off my printer is this little thing. It's got a steel dowel here, and then these three holes line up to the holes on the back of the bike bucket. So we're going to first screw this on, boom, and then get rolling. Speaking of finger tech, here's some other finger tech products we're putting in. We have the 22 to 1 uh, Silver Spark. We have their new lightweight plastic hubs, and a personal favorite of mine, the foam wheels. So I've currently used my little mini air compressor to charge up this tank. We're sitting at 150 PSI, and I'm gonna pop this valve. It's gonna be our first test of our pneumatic flipper. Is everybody ready? Safety glasses on, and one, two, three. Woo! All right. Bro. We tossed. And technically that was the second fire without any weight on it. <laughs> oh, that's fun. We will need to put a rubber band in here to pull this back down. Oh, I think hands work just fine. Mm, no. All right, so this is gonna be technically be the fifth shot. No, Whoa. we still got a full 360 out of that. Whoa. And sixth shot. Still upside down. And hopefully, if this robot gets flipped over... Oh, doesn't work if I'm holding the cable. <laughs> <laughs> the things we learn. The things we learn. I think this tank's really like only going to have like eight or nine shots, just due to the size, of the, sil the size of your tank and the size of the cylinder. But, yeah. Okay, so I just quickly soldered everything together. I'm about to do the mixing, and uh, there's actually... And this is the original FingerTech uh, radio receiver and speed controllers. So there's a two-step process for fixing the mixing on a FingerTech robot. Step one, make forward, forward. So if I push this forward, eh, everything goes backwards. That means to fix that, I'm going to have to flip the purple and blue here and the purple and blue here. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay. So I just flipped the wires. Purple and blue have been swapped. Now when I push forward... The robot goes forward. I push backward, the robot goes backward. I push right, it goes left, and I push left, and it goes right. So this is step two. If you get lucky and the steering's correct, you don't have to do anything. But if, like me, now we're going to, on the receiver, flip channels one and two. Now that I've swapped the two speed controllers down there, I turn it right, it turns right, I turn left, it turns left. So forward, backward, right, and left. And one last fun detail about the FingerTech uh, stock electronics. Let's see if I'm trying to find the right angle here. It's possible to put the receiver, the speed controllers, and a battery all completely behind the motors, leaving the entire front cavity open for your weapon system. Just thought you guys might like to know. So my next step is going to be one of my harder steps. Is I need to make it so the servo can pull this little air valve in and out. And that still is charged. So, I'm going to drill two holes, one here and one here on the Viper kit. Uh, these two are for me to run a zip tie and some double stick tape to hold the valve right there. And then this hole is going to allow me to mount said servo. This is a servo Turnabots sent me. And it, they normally use this for flippers, so I have a feeling this will have more than enough power to pull this valve quickly. And I, I know technically you can find little tiny solenoids in some of the professional um, pneumatic flipping robots. Have these like little tiny solenoids that are only a couple grams, way better than this setup. But this is the stock setup you can get when you order your tank and cylinder. So I'm going to go with this. About to apply my secret weapon, a paperclip. I know it doesn't look much like a paperclip, but I make the little linkage between the servo and the uh, 
the air valve with just a paper clip. I, I know it seems silly, but you need to be able to push and pull. So um, it can't be twine. Or it has to be twine with a crazy pulley setup. So I'm going to bend this up and put it between the two. Here we are for the very first full, um, fully set up run. We're going to fire. We're currently at 120 PSI. Nice. Once again, I still do need to put a rubber band in here to pull this back down. Now that everything's wired, I can actually get this answer, which is when it's upside down, it does itself right. <laughs> well, um, definitely went up. I'm gonna back up a little bit more. Well, the light bow's now out, and I should uh, really get this rubber band in here so it resets itself. Oh man, just putting that last arm piece on makes this look so good. So one thing I do wanna say when building flippers, you have to reinforce the bottom. Sheet metal does not cut it on its own. Um, the sheet metal, when this thing fires, if you just have a straight sheet metal arm, the sheet metal bows and you lose flipping force. So you need this structure. You need to like make it out of C channel at least or reinforce it so the titanium and sheet metal itself cannot bend. Once you have a rigid structure, here's my one pounder from last time. And <laughs> was pretty good. Let's put it all the way on, see what happens. Wow! Okay, time for the next test. I've added rubber bands. <laughs> it totally works! Alright, well now with the return spring in there. I think I still might need a little downforce. It looks like it's not quite making that last little bit. So we're just gonna need a third rubber band. Okay, move the rubber bands up a little bit. Back the robot up. All right, next up, I've made this little clear piece that's going to slide in here. Let the power cable pass through the big hole, and there's a notch for this power cable. And then you screw it down via those two screw holes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there it is. Fully armored. I made little uh, bin cutouts to help wrap the tank so the tank stays nice and in there. Technically, there, there are screw holes down there, and I should have punched these two and added the additional screws. My original intention was I designed this little TPU plow to go on the front here, but um, I printed it in PLA first, and um, the TPU is not going to be done in time for me to edit this video, so we just went with sheet metal. But, yeah, there she is, in all of her glory. Now, I, I know I'm not going to go win any one-pound competitions with this, but... It's more of one of those things of, could you do it? And we did it. <laughs> uh, the flipper class has always been a very difficult class. Like, only the most senior teams ever try this at BattleBots, like Bronco and Wyachi. And uh, it, it really is a hard class to build in, and it's an even harder class to repair and maintain. But for my little 24-hour build here, I am pretty pleased with this. And I think the last thing we need to do... Oh yeah. So we need to get the scale here. Let's see if I met weight. Turning on. And here we go. 14.7! 14.7! And just, just to prove. That's literally everything to make the robot run. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, there's, there's, there's a whole extra ounce of armor we can put on this. 
GPU wedge. I originally was intending this to be more like I was going to publish the files and uh, I, I was gonna do like this fancy part in here with the servo. I was originally gonna make like a nice little 3D printed thing. I wanted to make it so you didn't need to drill any additional holes. And I wanted to make the top and the top and wedge a printable TPU part. So maybe uh, leave a comment if you guys would actually like to build one of these and like me to get this thing to the point where um, I could just upload the files and then anybody could take a whack at it. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know. Or if you want Curtis to start selling these on FingertechRobotics.com, where I got the majority of the parts for this. Um, leave that comment and let Curtis know you want it. And also, if you want to see where I got my pneumatic components, there's the website. Uh, type that in, type in pneumatic stuff, and uh, they are the ones who sell those little cylinders and tanks and all the cabling. So, anyway. So you guys can see this. This is a little bicycle pump I'm using. Now, my old one fried after a decade. I, I used to have one that could get these tanks up to 200 PSI which they do run at. I don't recommend it. It's actually past the manufacturer's specs, but you can do it. Um, they normally just hook up to a car. So I just have a little 12 volt battery right here. You hook this on. It just uses a little bicycle pump, bicycle pump. And you click it and it's loud as hell. tuck this away Boop. all right charged and ready we're gonna run in and pop You know, it's amazing how with just a couple screws and standoffs, this already has become so much more rigid. Huh. That's what she said. Oh, I'm family friendly, Diana. We're trying to be family friendly. The key word is trying. One of us is. <laughs>